Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Mr. Hill, the uh, Texas history teacher for the Michigan State team, and this is the second part of our uh, study of the different cultures of Native Americans who lived in Texas. This section is on the tribes that we know as the Western Gulf culture. They are made up of two tribes in Texas, the Karankawas and the Quilticans. Um, they're called the Western Gulf Tribes uh, of Texas because they are part of a Native American group that populated the lands along the western edge of the Gulf of Mexico from Texas south along the coast of Mexico. Um, the first group we're going to talk about are the Karankawas. The Karankawas lived along the coast of Texas. Uh, sometimes they lived near the beach. Sometimes they lived um, a little further inland. Uh, they fished in the coastal bays and they hunted and gathered, meaning, um, if you remember from our key terms, uh, the men would hunt and the women would then go out and they would gather um, whatever they could find to eat, whether it was fruits and berries and nuts that grew wild, um, whether it was a uh, small game um, along the coast of Texas, that would also include things such as oysters and crabs. The Karankawas were nomadic, so they moved a lot from place to place. An un unusual trait of the Karankawas is that the men of their tribe stood an average height of about six feet tall. Now this was very unusual for tribes, uh, for Native American tribes in Texas. Um, the men were generally much shorter and much stouter. Uh, the Karankawas though were tall and lean and muscular. Um, some of the early European explorers that came into um, uh, contact with them were amazed because the Karankawas uh, were, um, they towered over the Spaniards. Um, much like the Atakapan, the Karankawas um, made dugout canoes, and with those dugout canoes, they would fish and hunt um, in the shallow bays and inlets and lakes and rivers uh, down in near the coast of Texas. Um, they would hunt uh, shark, uh, they would hunt uh, dolphin, uh, they would hunt alligators and all manner of small game. Uh, and they would fish, uh, spearfish, they would make traps, uh, anything they could to, to, catch, um, to catch fish. Um, interesting thing about the Karankawas is that because they lived down along the coast of Texas where it's hot and humid and there's a lot of standing water, they also had to deal with a lot of biting insects. And one of the ways that they found that they could keep insects off of them was to cook alligator meat. And the grease that dripped from that meat could then be collected. Uh, and when it had um, sort of thickened up, they would take it and they would apply it to their themselves like a... Uh, I guess almost like cream or like Vaseline, like you would rub it on your skin, uh, and the smell would keep insects away. And, and, well, to be honest with you, I can't help but think that it would keep other people away too. But um, And the thing that is probably the most interesting to students, the one that has the most ooh and ah factor when we talk about it each year, is the fact that the Karankawas um, were ritualistic cannibals, which means that um, their religious belief made them think mm -hmm. that if they wanted to gain the strength, the courage, the spirit of, of someone, they would consume their flesh. They did not eat people because they are hungry. They ate their enemies because uh, in, a, in a big ritual ceremony, um, after they had, had, had slain an enemy, they would cut off pieces of his skin and they would roast it. Um, and they would eat it thinking that by taking their enemy into their body that they would somehow be imbued with his, um, with his spirit, his strength, 
um, his courage. So um, they were unusual in that they did eat other people, but like I said, it was not for food. It was part of their religious practices. The next tribe we're going to talk about in the Western Gulf culture are the Kowiltikans. And the Kowiltikans were a small group of people. Uh, they lived in small bands or, or, or tribes, and they were very nomadic. They moved from place to place all of the time. And because of the area that they lived in, in South Texas, sort of along the the Rio Grande, uh, they lived in what is a pretty harsh environment. Um, it's it's There's not a lot of trees. The trees that are there are generally short, uh, scrubby mesquite trees and things like that. Um, they don't, there wasn't a lot of grazing land, so they didn't have, uh, herds of buffalo that would come through. Um, any type of animal they hunted was usually small, uh, occasionally deer here and there. Uh, but it was hot most of the year and, um, they struggled, uh, daily to, uh, to feed themselves. Uh, so their, their um, shelter was usually just a lean-to, which consisted of two poles in the ground uh, with a grass mat propped up, uh, leaned up against those poles so that it formed like a half of a tent. So um, the Kowiltikans were, along with the Karankawa, were some of the first tribes in Texas that Spanish explorers came in contact with. And the uh, first Spanish explorers that wrote about their contact with the Coelticans talked about what a, a basically a miserable existence that they lived. The Coelticans, um, like I said, they were constantly in search of food. They relied on plants uh, such as mesquite beans and cactus. Uh, mesquite beans grow on mesquite trees and they are these long, thin, uh, very bitter tasting beans. And I say that because I know that as a kid, I probably popped one off and, and, uh, and ate it or put it in my mouth just to try it and see what it tasted like. And it was pretty nasty to be honest with you. Um, but the, you know, when you're hungry, there's a lot that you'll eat that you normally probably wouldn't eat. Um, they would, uh, eat the, um, the large green part of a cactus after they had shaved the the nettles off of it, the, the little sticky part. And then they would eat the cactus tuna, the red fruit that grows on top of, of cactus. Uh, for meat, they would eat pretty much anything they could get their hands on. Uh, they were known to eat snakes, uh, spiders. Um, one of the things that they considered, I guess, sort of a delicacy was was ant eggs. They would find a mound of these really large red ants. Uh, they would dig it up. And if you've ever knocked over an, a, like a, a mound of fire ants, you've probably seen those little white things that are in there. Um, a red ant is a much larger ant than a fire ant, so their eggs are much larger. And the uh, the Quilticans would dig up a mound and I guess fight through all the red ants that were trying to bite them. They would scoop out those eggs and they would then uh, sort of roast them over on a, on a hot rock uh, over a fire. And, uh, and they are said to actually be pretty tasty. I, I'd never know because I'm certainly not going to eat them. Um, but they would also eat small animals, you know, raccoons, possums, uh, armadillos, uh, every once in a while, a deer, if they could chase it down and, and, uh, and wear it out and kill it. Uh, so the Kowiltikans, you know, like I said, they lived a, a very rough life in a very harsh part of Texas. So that pretty much wraps up the Kowiltikans and the Karankawas, the Western Gulf culture. Uh, once again, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>